Welcome to Post Game Live. Of all the things you didn't expect to see on Christmas Eve, that number right there, Patriots beat the Denver Broncos 26 to 23 in Denver. It gets even stranger. They won on a 56 yard field goal from Chad Ryland, who missed to the left, who missed to the right throughout <laughs> the game. And finally, when the game was on the line, he made the 56-yarder to give the Patriots their fourth win of the season. How do you feel about a Patriots fan? Happy? Disappointed? <laughs> it messes with your draft position. Tommy Curran is here. Ted Johnson is here. Got to start with you, Curran. Yeah. If there's a takeaway or two from this game, what is it for you? They are going to hate themselves in the morning, <laughs> but it feels real good right now. To win 26-23, redemption stories all over the place. It was mentioned by Rich Eisen for the kicker, Chad Ryland, but also for Devontae Parker, also for Bailey Zappi, released at the end of training camp, relegated to a, a guy who didn't even dress for the Raiders game. He comes back and he architects a drive like this. The Patriots were bounced off of prime time for the Kansas City game, but now they've won two prime time games in their last four. It's pretty amazing to see this team. What it does to change the overall conversation around the team, I don't know, probably very little because the Denver Broncos seem a little bit woeful on their own, but it changes the night. Merry Christmas. It, it, it does. It really does. It, it might change the narrative just a little bit because here's what you're going to have. You're going to have – you're going to – everybody watched that game tonight. It was an exciting game. That was, I mean, if you didn't have uh, fun watching that game, especially the second half, I don't know what to do with you. But, I mean, just there's – there was still fight. That team came back. You saw how the Patriots played in that second half. That's going to be part of the narrative, I think, maybe with this win is, hey, these guys are still playing for hard for Bill. But just put that aside. Um, great game. Great game for Bailey Zappi when you consider how, how, the, how the thing started. Just a – a horrible sack fumble there uh, to, to start the game. He was terrible in the second half of these last two games, and so the second half has been, uh, you know, a big issue for him. And he, they come out in that third quarter, you guys, and start slinging it. And it's, it's just start putting drive after drive together. Three touchdowns, two uh, on offense, and one on special teams in that third quarter. And then uh, almost choke it away there at the end. But I'll say this, the defense had me worried there when uh, Russ started cooking and doing his thing, leaving the pocket and started you know, hitting guys downfield. The defense came up huge. Denver has it, uh, scores tied. They have it. They lose four yards on three downs. Get the, the Patriots get the ball back and are able to go down and kick it, a game-winning field goal. So hats off to the defense. Half off to, hats off to Bailey Zappi for having a really, really, really outstanding second half when that's kind of been his bugaboo all season. And that's exactly where I want to pick it up. You know, uh, Curran said we don't know if this changes the conversation at all uh, about the Patriots this season. Maybe it does with Bailey Zappi. We know that mm -hmm. he has been capable of getting it done in the first half. The story is second half, he falls apart. Well, he had a good first half. I mean, solid. I mean, only scored three points in the first half. Second half, the defense really put them in position to score. But when it really mattered, because I, I said to Ted Johnson uh, down the stretch, I said, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Are they going to play for overtime? They wanted, they, didn't. To. they wanted to. They wanted to play for to. overtime, but Bailey Zappi, they put the ball in his hands, and he and made a throw yeah. to Devontae Parker. And to me, that's what helps to seal him, Mike and Ted, as a guy that you can look at as a legitimate number two. Okay, we're in trouble here. A guy got hurt. We can put him in. Now, we talk about uh, people might want to put the card ahead of the horse and say he's a starter. You certainly still need a young quarterback with more vast physical talents. But if you're talking about, at the worst, a second uh, backup quarterback – and maybe at the best, a guy who can bridge and even start until the next guy is ready. Get you through a few games. Just a few games. But oh, you know what? You, you, said, you can I, at least put them in the conversation. I thought you were going to say they wanted to play for overtime. They did. And you know what happened was the Broncos actually forced them to change their plans because Broncos call a timeout after, after uh, first down play, so you know, right. second and four. That's right. Uh, and, then, and then they call a timeout again, and they forced the Patriots. Okay, what are you going to do? That's right. You're going to have a little – a sorry run play, or are you going to go for it? And they actually passed the ball, mm -hmm. and they had some momentum there. So, Ted, if you look at Bailey Zappi, uh, do you look at him as, hey, just a backup quarterback yeah. who's – on a good run, or do you take him more seriously than that? Uh, I, I, just Bridgy, a good run. Bridgy, I mean, he's, nice he's, Bridgy quarterback. He's, he's a Bridgy quarterback, and I, I, said, I said that last week, and I don't, nothing's going to change my mind. Look, I think he had five, five passes uh, of 20, 25 uh, yards or more in this game. I mean, and I thought in his first, his first start against, uh, what was it, L.A. Chargers a few weeks ago, even though he completed one deep ball, he gives these receivers – 
opportunity to catch these deep mm -hmm. balls. Um, I mean, they're always just right around them. You know, they're, they're not always perfectly thrown, but they're all catchable balls. And so that's what's, what's what I like about this kid. Look, here's the thing. You know, can he be a, a viable starter? I don't think so. But does he have some guts? But why not? Um, why can't I, I he be? Because I think he's a streaky mean, player. What do you mean, why not? What, I, no, no, I, I no. Think what do you think he player. could be? No, 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 I'm asking. I, I just don't oh, know. I just want him to, you know, you say, I don't think he can be a good starter. And then somebody is saying, well, why can't he be a good starter? Look, I, I'm just saying, I don't think he can do it consistently. I, I just think, he, can he, can he, can he have a good si night? I mean, is it size? Is it arm strength? Uh, it's, it's probably, yeah, probably a little bit of, a little bit of both. I just think there, there's some limitations there. Um, and so, um, I, I just think teams can figure him out. I thought the, the, the Patriots offense kind of broke the code for the Broncos defense. Mm. I, 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 and no offense to my former teammate Vance Joseph, the coordinator for the Denver Broncos. I just thought they were, they were, they were motioning out to empty and getting the Broncos defense to check into a, a very conservative uh, zone defense and the Patriots kept killing them with it, and the Broncos never made adjustments. So against teams that maybe aren't the smartest, they have some predictability. Look, Bailey Zappi, I think, can have good games. I just think against the better defenses, Michael and Tom, I don't think uh, I could expect Bailey Zappi to kind of just deliver uh, in those games. And let's face it, a lot of those deep passes that he completed, look, uh, there's going to be days when he's 0 for 5 instead of 5-0 and 0 on those deep balls. It's just a lot of times it's just the odds, and I just can't think he can do it Week in, week out, game in, game in. He can, he can be a starter, but you're always going to be trying to replace him. He will always be a player, even if somehow by some weird confluence of circumstances, he ends up next September as the starting quarterback for the Patriots. Something strange happened. They will be looking to replace him, whether it's with whoever was injured or not, um, coming into the season. It'll be interesting to see in March. For instance, what do the Patriots do in the free agent group? Are they trying to replace Bailey Zappi with a more experienced veteran quarterback, Flacovian kind of guy? Yeah. Or they say, Love you it. know what, he's fine. He can be our Gardner Minshew to Anthony Richardson. And if whoever we draft, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Caleb Williams, they get hurt, he can come in and be Minshewian. But to me, you're always going to be trying to replace him. And we talked about this a lot. And I know that we're fresh off a really nice win, a really fun win. Doesn't help you at all next year in the draft, but it was really fun on Christmas Eve. But I think you're always going to look at Bailey Zappi and say, okay, he was trying to prove that he could be a backup quarterback because he wasn't that. As recently as the Las Vegas game, they had him inactive in place, uh, replaced by Malik Cunningham to play right. in that game. So the Patriots don't necessarily believe in that. They've shown that. He's playing not because he's particularly good, but because Mac Jones is particularly bad. But I, again, the, the upshot is Bailey Zappi has earned an opportunity to solidify himself as the backup quarterback. You and know I, what? I saw something from him tonight, uh, Ted, and, and tell me if I'm, yeah. if I'm overstating this. He moved around in the pocket really well, mm -hmm. and he was able to complete some passes where you thought – you know, maybe three games ago, Bailey Zappi, first game as a starter, second game as a starter, Correct. is going to stand there and, and take a sack. He really moved around and created some plays, it, it, not in a, in a dynamic way, but just, hey, pocket awareness and, and, and throwing it down the field. Michael, that, that touchdown to, to Mike Isecki in the back of the end zone, that was him finding a little bit of space to kind of go break in out to his right and buying time and then hitting uh, Gasecki in the back of the end zone because the Broncos were playing zone defense, a lot like how the Patriots were playing zone defense defense against Patrick Mahomes, who was killing him with those kind of scrambles out of the pocket. So Bailey Zappi did the same thing. He's got pretty good spatial awareness and knows where, where the pressure's coming from. And so, uh, the, I mean, the, the one thing I do worry about, you know, Bailey Zappi is not only is he streaky, can he be maybe streaky in season, but he can be streaky in a game too, mm -hmm. is there's kind of like one play that you just go, oh, uh, Bailey, what were you thinking on that play? And, you know, maybe that first play, I mean, a little bit of that was on Zappi. The first play of the game, you know, he, he coughs, up the, coughs up the football with pressure right in his face and should have, you know, should have uh, done a better job of securing that ball. That's the only thing about Bailey Zappi is you can point to one or two plays in each of these games where you go, oh, my gosh. I mean, the Broncos just didn't do anything with that gift that Bailey Zappi gave them early in that game, went for it on fourth down and couldn't get in, and so zero points came from that. But that's my point. I think he's streaky, and he always has one play that just makes me scratch my head. But I'd still say he never threw the pick. I mean, that first one, that's like pulling out of your driveway first thing in the morning, and all of a sudden here comes a dump truck at you. I, he incurs some blame <laughs> for not having it buttoned up right. and actually bouncing it off his own shoulder pad. 
But what blame do the Patriots incur for having Vidarian Lowe and James Ferentz on the field to start the game instead of Anto Antonio Maffi and Trent Brown? I still don't understand that logic. Again, dodge the bullet. I'm, I'm with you on that. Dodge the bullet. They didn't score. But to me, the, the good thing about Bailey Zappi is you see a guy who tried a fake spike play and threw it into a team meeting um, when he was under duress against the Indianapolis Colts in Germany. Yeah. But now he, he doesn't have... He understands when to fight another day. He did it on scrambles. He did it on throws out of bounds. It, it has sunk into him. There are absolutely physical limitations. You'll always want to try and replace him if he happens to be your starter. But I think he has definitely solidified himself. How complicit do you guys think? Oh, we probably have to jump to something. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I can yeah, tell. Yeah, I can yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. You're he a TV. You're a TV. When I do that, when I do that, uh, he doesn't mean like this. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> like, like Tom Curran has been doing this for Hold a long time. Hold that thought. All right, Pat's dropped to fourth in the draft. If the season ended today, so how do you feel about the win? Happy holidays. Or bah humbug, hurts draft status. Join the conversation <laughs> by voting in our poll by going to NBCSportsBoston.com slash Patriots vote or scan the QR code on the screen. You see it right there and scroll down to the poll.